Hello, welcome to another recap video. This drama is about a high school student named Zhang Donbi. She's not very good at mathematics, and when the teacher calls her up to solve a math problem, she fails to do so. Her teacher starts scolding her in front of the class for failing to solve the problem. When she gets home, her mother starts telling her to study hard for math as the CSET, which is the college entrance exam is coming up, and mathematics is an important portion of it, and she should get into a good university. Danby doesn't enjoy studying math, and she always complains about her mother putting a lot of pressure on her. She prefers spending time with her close friend and have fun instead of studying for CSAT. Danby tells her friend that it would be great to get into a good university without taking any exams. She sits alone and starts getting more nervous because tomorrow is the day of the exam. The day of the CSAT exam comes, and she gets up early. She's very stressed how she will do on it. Her mother puts nutritious snacks in her bag so she would eat before taking the exam. She takes the bus and starts studying for the last minutes. Her books drop and someone helps her to pick them up, and she gets off the bus quickly, forgetting to take her umbrella as it is raining very hard. She arrives at the location, but when she sees everyone getting in and looks at the banner of the exam, she gets very nervous and feels pressured. Danby refuses to go in and decides to run away from the test location, she goes to a park and sits there, wishing someone will take her away from that location to somewhere very far away from here that no one can find her. Suddenly, the sky becomes dark, and as it's raining very hard, she notices a puddle which has a weird reflection on it. Danby starts thinking that puddle might be the way to her freedom and can take her away from this pressured situation, and she is ready to take that risk and decides to jump into the puddle. When she jumps into the puddle, she is taken to many years back to Joseon era. She is in her school's uniform and keeps looking around as she's in the king's palace. It's during a ritual for asking the sky to rain as it has been three years since it rained in Joseon, so they're praying to rain again. Danby thinks that she's in a historical movie setting and asks if it's a filming scene. She takes out her phone where everyone there gets shocked to what that is, and the king starts asking her who she is. Danby realizes that she has actually time-traveled to the past, and it's really the Joseon era. She remembers from a historical movie about the way they prayed for raining. Danby starts saying that movie's dialogues and is shouting please rainfall and start raining in this country. Everyone keeps listening to her, and they think that she's sent from the skies to help them in that situation. She does this to distract them and finds a moment to escape. She keeps running to get away from there, and finds a place to hide behind the eunuch's clothes and decides to disguise herself as a eunuch so no one would recognize her. Everyone starts searching for her as they believe she's a swindler who tried to fool them. King tells everyone that they should start using science and mathematics to solve their problems instead of relying on superstitions. King has a queen, and her father keeps pressuring her to spend a night with the king in order to give birth to a son. The queen is a nice woman who doesn't want to pressure the king to love her and spend time with her, but her father keeps pressuring her to do so. Danby dops her phone, and as she's trying to grab it, a person named Park Yeon comes and captures her. King keeps asking the scholars if they have been able to solve the Pythagorean's theorem problem, but the scholars haven't been able to find a solution for it. King goes to meet Danby and tells her that it hasn't rained for three years, and he thinks that she's from Ming who tried to make fun of them. As he's getting ready to punish her, Danby tells him that she's from the future who knows a lot of things and can be useful. He doesn't get convinced. She heard before that he relies on math and science, so she tells him that she's a math genius who knows a lot of things about math and science. He decides to believe her words and refuses to punish her. He shows her the Pythagorean theorem's problem and asks her to solve it there. She takes out her pen and starts solving the problem. The king is very surprised to see the pen as it is something new for him. She finishes solving the problem, and the king's is very shocked that she solved it so quickly that the scholars couldn't do it for days. She tells him that this is a very basic problem for a high school senior student. He promises her that he will let her go when it starts raining again, and she should help him until then. They dress her as a eunuch, and they think that she's a man, and she decides to not tell them that she's a woman, as they might punish her for being close to the king as a woman. The king makes her his eunuch and calls her to teach him those formulas. She asks him if he knows the numbers, and he says he doesn't know those. Danby decides to teach him the numbers first. The king gets excited for his new lessons and carefully listens to her instructions and lessons. 
he provides a house for her and pays her too. They wake her up early every morning to escort the king, as she is his eunuch. It was difficult for Danby to adapt to the new lifestyle and situation, and the king constantly wants her to review her work for solving the problems in order to get better at the operations in math. He has now learned all the numbers and how to write them, so he's practicing the basic addition and multiplication operations, and throughout the entire time, Danby is with him. The royal workers keep arguing with him and tell him that math and science won't have any positive effects, but the king wants everyone in to learn writing and have basic knowledge in each field. Danby is ready to quiz him on the table of multiplications. He gets very serious and wants to answer all of her questions correctly. She tells him if he gets a question wrong, then she will hit his forehead. He answers one of the multiplications wrong, and she hits his forehead. Everyone gets scared that the king will get mad at her for hitting him, but he suddenly starts laughing and tells everyone to leave as he's enjoying this, and he asks Danby to quiz him more with difficult questions. It seems like the king is enjoying the way he's comfortable with Danby, and she treats him as a friend where others look at him as a king only. He sees that she keeps looking at his food, so he dismisses everyone so Danby can eat from his food. He enjoys teasing her, and she keeps making him smile. She also has cup noodles in her bag and prepares it. She offers the king to eat the noodles and teases him again. He keeps resisting to eat it as he thinks it'll taste bad. After he tastes the food, he realizes how good it tastes and enjoys it. The king starts doing things and experiences new lifestyle with Danby, and he enjoys it a lot. The king throws a ball to Danby and asks her to play soccer with him. They start playing and have fun together. He tells her that as a king he doesn't get to do all the things he wants, and Danby tells him that he should enjoy his life and do the things he enjoys and have fun in his life. They start running around, get tired, and lie down on the ground. Their interactions slowly increase, and they become closer and closer to each other. He suddenly stares at her, and she is surprised. This scene gives a lot of butterflies, but he says that she's hiding something which is a tangerine. Danby believes that the king thinks she's a man and not a woman as he keeps her by his side as a eunuch. However, King knows that Danby is a girl, but he keeps pretending that he doesn't know. Now he's gotten very close to her and keeps smiling when he thinks about her. One day, when he gets ready to go out of palace, he stares at himself in the mirror and realizes that he's smiling because he wants to meet Danby. He puts his hand on his heart and notices that it beats faster than usual, which means that he's developed romantic feelings for her over time. In the other scene, Queen's father tells her that she should meet the king tonight and give him this food which contains sleeping powder as she should spend the night with him to give birth to a crown prince. Regardless of how Queen feels, she agrees to her father as she has no other choice. However, instead of the king, Danby eats the food which is opposite to their plan. Queen comes to visit the king at night. She tells him that she wants to stay there tonight. Queen starts taking off her clothes, but the king stops her and tells her to not force herself to do things that she doesn't want to. Suddenly Danby comes out, not feeling very well, and she suddenly collapses in King's arms. Queen leaves his chamber. He gets worried about her, but she's fine. Danby keeps saying that he's handsome and she's starting to fall for him slowly. He doesn't say anything and keeps listening to her confessions. She says that she enjoys spending time with him and suddenly falls asleep. He keeps staring at her and tells her that you think I'll keep you by my side because I like it. Then she becomes conscious again and tells him that she likes him a bit, but she'll leave him when it rains, then she hugs him tightly. The king gets tempted and starts getting closer to her to kiss her as he's moved by her romantic words. As he's about to kiss her, he changes his mind and doesn't kiss her. He might have thought that it isn't right to kiss her when she's unconscious as she should give her consent to it. He's very considerate towards her by taking cautious actions. He then lifts her and makes sure she rests well. Danby wakes up and notices that she's hugging the king. She gets very shocked and apologizes to him, and gets out quickly as she feels very embarrassed. The queen's father and another minister make a plan to arrest Danby as a traitor that tries to fool king by staying next to him, because he has noticed that the king is getting to learn new things about science and math from her, which is not good. They arrest Danby and want to punish her. The ministers have a meeting with the king and keep pressuring him to punish Danby for fooling everyone that she sent from the skies to solve the rain issues. 
King calls Yeon to bring the container that they use to drink water, and he tells everyone that Donby has suggested to use this as a measurement to how much it rains to know about the measurement of the rain. The king becomes successful in convincing them and writes an order to stop Danby's punishment. King is very worried that by keeping her by his side he would put her in danger. He goes to the field and starts playing soccer on her own with anger and lies on the ground as he keeps remembering her memories with Danby. He just can't imagine his life without her. Danby is given a math problem to solve. She puts all of her efforts to solve that problem. She hasn't spent that much time in solving a math problem before, and she finally solves it. It suddenly starts raining. When the king notices that it's raining, he remembers what Danby told her before that she will leave him once it starts raining. He then rushes to find her because he's afraid that she might leave him as it's raining. He eventually finds her. She shows him the thing she has created to save water when it's raining, which is a very important element during heavy rains and floods, and it's based on her calculations as she successfully solved the math problem which helped her to build that. She starts crying and tells him that she has never tried this hard for solving anything in her life. He starts crying too and tells her that he has tried hard to do something, but he hasn't been able to do it. He puts her hand on his heart to hear his heartbeat and hugs her tightly. King meant that he wanted to forget her as everything was leading to that, but no matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't convince himself to forget her. She has a flashback that she actually went back to present when it was raining, but Danby decided to go back to the past through the puddle to be with the king. King tells Yeon to take her away from the palace so she would be safe. Queen's father tells Yeon to kill Danby. He takes out his sword to kill her, but he doesn't do it. The king realizes that something will happen to Danby and rushes to save her. Yeon saves Danby as some men come and attack them. He tells her to run away with his horse and he will keep fighting them so she can get to safety. She listens to him, gets on the horse, and goes away from that place. Queen is also out of the palace and notices Yeon who is wounded and comes towards her. It seems like she is in love with him, but she can't express her feelings because her father forced her to marry the king without asking her how she feels about that marriage. Yon starts taking care of the queen. In the other scene, Danby is by the sea, where the king arrives with his horse and sees her. As soon as they meet, he rushes to her and kisses her without saying any words. Danby is shocked, but she accepts it and kisses him too. They share a romantic moment near the sea as it's a reunion for them after a separation. He's relieved now that she's safe because he was too worried about her. He hugs her tightly to show how much he has missed her, and this feeling is from both sides as Danby also feels safe in his arms. Queen remembers her past with Yeon, which shows that they're connected to each other from the past. She goes out and tells him that she will help him with the bandages for his wounds. She truly cares for him. Then it shows Danby and the king who are at the beach. She tells him that she's from the future and she always wanted to go very far away from the place she was in, and that might be the cause that she time-traveled to Joseon era. He grabs her hand and writes the letters of love on her hand to change her mood and express his feelings to her. She starts laughing and tells him me too, which means she loves him too. His confession has moved her and changed the atmosphere. She takes out the chocolates she has in her bag, which have letters on it, and forms the word love. Danby also notices that the image which is on the money bill is actually the king's face and tells him that he looks much more handsome in real life. She starts crying as she's thinking about her life and he gets close to her and kisses her to change her mood. He tells her to not cry as he always wants to see her smiling and being cheerful. After spending time together, she notices moss in the water. Danby tells him that the reason the water didn't drip at a constant speed because the moss produced form, trapping the water, was blocking the way. That's why the speed of the water dripping did not match to her calculations. King takes her back to the palace, and they remove the moss from the water, and the water keeps dripping with the pace that she had calculated before. Danby tells him to give high five and shows him how to do it, as he didn't know how to do it. They restart their lessons. They start reviewing the multiplication table, and she gets one wrong. Instead of hitting her forehead, he actually kisses her forehead. It then shows the queen and Danby that she's preparing cup noodles for the queen, and she really likes when she tastes it as the queen really loves eating food. They start getting close to each other. King gives order to give a beautiful dress to Danby, 
and prepare her for a meeting with him. She becomes very beautiful with her new hairstyle and dress. She then realizes that they want to make her king's concubine. Danby decides to run away as she doesn't want to become a concubine, and she's actually very shocked that everyone now knows that she's a girl, so they would want to punish her for that. They inform King about it, and he goes searching for her. He finally finds her and takes her to his chambers without saying anything. Danby starts explaining that she doesn't want to get married now, as it isn't her marriage age because she's only 19 years old. King starts teasing her and then hugs her tightly. He doesn't want to get married to her now as he knows that she's against it for now. He just wants to reveal to everyone her true identity and keep her by his side. King tells her to sleep in his room but separate from each other. As they start talking together, he can't control his feelings anymore and goes to the other side to sleep next to her. She was against it at first, but she lets him sleep by her side and keeps looking at him as he sleeps comfortably next to her. The next day, Queen visits Danby and tells her that someone wants to meet her. Queen actually now wants to marry Danby to King as she knows their feelings for each other. Danby goes out to see whom she should meet. It's King's mother, but she's actually her mother in the present. The moment she sees her, Danby starts crying and calls her mom. She starts remembering her mother and the way she always ignored her and didn't value her, but she is truly missing her now. King gives her a hairpin and asks her to stay with him forever. Danby is now wearing her school uniform and tells him that she wants to go back. She also tells him that she's missing her mother and everything else she had in the future, and he's like a dream in her life. King gets sad with her words and tells her that she can do anything that she wants. He then leaves her without saying anything more. Danby really loves the king, and her feelings for him are sincere. She doesn't want to interfere with history and the past events. She also wants to go back to stay by her mother's side. When the king leaves, someone comes and hits her head from behind. She falls down, and no one is there to save her. Queen's father visits her daughter and tells her that Danby will soon be gone from King's life, and she can win his heart. Queen is very sad and angry at his father telling him that he never does things the way she wants, and he never listens to her. She rushes to tell the king what has happened. He quickly goes to the place he left Danby and sees that the place is set on fire. He tries to get in, but they prevent him from going inside as the fire is getting more intense. He goes to the other side to get inside from the secret passage. He gets in and starts searching for Danby. King finally finds her and apologizes to her for leaving her alone there. Danby gets well and prepares to leave once it rains again. She tells him that he will continue to be a wise king who wants his people to know how to read and write and people will love him a lot. King gets very happy with her words. The day of the reigning arrives. King offers her to take her to the sea. They both go there and start having fun under the rain. It seems like a real date. They don't want to get separated from each other. But the time has arrived to say goodbye to each other. Her feet keep touching the water, and he gets nervous that she will disappear now. He lifts her up so her feet wouldn't touch the water, and they share a romantic kiss. This is a very sad kiss, as it's during the farewell moment, which they don't know if they will meet again in the future. However, King is ready to let her go because he knows that she wants to go back to the future, and he loves her so much that he doesn't want to force her to stay. He lets her go, and she falls into the waiter, which takes her to the present time at the same park she time-traveled to the past. When she returns to the present, she realizes it is still the day of CSAT exam, so she rushes to get to her school. She finally arrives to her classroom, and the teacher lets her take the exam. Donby is very eager to get to home to meet her mother. When she meets her again, she hugs her mother tightly and tells her that she misses her a lot. She's starting to value the people and the things she has in her life more because she missed them a lot when she time-traveled to the past. She meets her friend again who used to be the queen in the past. It starts raining again and she sees a puddle. Danby tries to step in, but nothing happens this time. She starts missing the king whom she loves a lot. As she's standing under the rain, a boy approaches her holding an umbrella for her. As he gets closer, she realizes he's the king from the past. She's very shocked when she sees him. He says that they have met before and he starts smiling. Then a flashback to the past is shown when during the same day, when Danby was on the bus reviewing for the last minutes, the bus stopped and her books fell. He was the one who helped her to collect her stuff, 
and she left her yellow umbrella in the bus. He took the umbrella and remembered her face to give it back to her. She's very happy to meet the person she loves a lot again. It is obvious that he feels something towards her too, which could be that he feels the connection between them. This drama ends with the scene of both of them smiling to each other, which shows that they could start a relationship with each other. The story proves that people should value what they have in their lives, as if one day they lose those like Danby did, they will start regretting, missing, and wanting them to come back. Also, it shows that miracles could happen as she was able to meet the king in the present. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for upcoming recap videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Bye everyone.